You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. So we're on. And today's guest, we've got Gene Barello. Gene, how are we? I'm doing all right, man. You know? Out of prison? Yes, out of prison again. So you're kind of like the... I've interviewed all the old school mafia guys from like the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. You're kind of the, the young school kind of done things differently because everything changed in the mafia, but you're very serious involved. Right. Conspiracy to murders, attempt murders, robberies. Right. Arson, everything. Everything. You can find You name of. it. Yeah. yeah. We, I did it all. Um, so the problem was, like I was telling you before, when we were coming up, we were still caught up in that old school era, I could say, because... We didn't grow up as kids with like cell phones, you know what I mean? So we were still on the street, you know what I mean? Everything was in the street. So as we were coming up in the late 90s, early 2000s, it was still chaotic. We were carrying guns. We were still carrying ourselves as if we were in the 80s. And that was the problem. When the mafia started dying down, and I want to say in like the mid 2000s, we were still running around gun ho. Mm-hmm. So the FBI and the cops were basically surveillance and me and our crew because we were still doing these violent acts and these horrible things. And they want you off the street when you're operating like that, you know? Before we get into everything, though, I always like to go back to the start with my guests. Right. Get more of an understanding about you, where you grew up, and how it all began. Right. So I was born in Brooklyn, Canarsie, Flatlands, 84th. Um, I was born and raised there till I was about, um, I'm born over there till I was about eight, nine years old, and I moved over to Queens. Uh, I was born, I was uh, grew up in Ozone Park and then Howard Beach, and that was uh, the motherland of uh, Italians, you could say. Was that a big change? It's Ozone Park changed now, but Howard Beach is still all Italian, you know, mm-hmm. Ir- Italian, Irish, uh, German, you know, but mostly uh, organized crime, should I say. What were you like at school? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Just a horror show, you know. I was kicked out of so many schools. I mean, my mother used to hide from the teachers outside, you know, they would come out and, uh, you know, I just it just wasn't meant for me. You know, I couldn't do it. I didn't like it, should I say. What about parents? Good. My my mother was good. My dad was, you know, obviously I get his uh, genetics. He was wild guy. wasn't a mafia guy, but a street dude. Um, he was a shooter, arm robber. Did a lot of jail time as well. Um, he passed away about a year ago now. Sorry. Yeah, yeah and um, I got close to him later on. But when we were younger, he him and my mom uh, got divorced at like you know eight years old, and then I went with my mother, and he went to Canada basically. How much does that affect you as a kid? Now you're a bit older. Do you look back and think it was a part uh, of your life where? I mean, yeah, not, not are really. We all, are you always going to go down that route? I don't use that excuse. You know what I mean? It's, it wasn't about him, not my dad or gone like that. I was just bad. You know, it was just in my DNA, I think, and where I grew up, you know? So um, it was just now blood. Do you see a lot of yourself in your dad? Yeah. I mean, well, his his uh, hot, his bipolar hotness and hothead and uh, violentness. Yeah, that's that's what I inherited from him, should I say. So and, you know, what was it like in school then? Kicked out all the time? Yeah, I was. I didn't make it. I didn't make it to the ninth grade. They put me in self-contained in ninth grade uh, for behavioral problems. I was going in. I went in junior high school. They tried to put me in the self-contained, and then um, what's that? That means like um, you can't move around. Like you're a bad kid. They put you in like, like you can't go to other classes. They have you in just one class, and yeah, like basically. Like a fucking prison. Yeah, basically like uh, for the misbehaved kids. So um, then in high school they kept trying to do that to me, and then I was done. I just left. What was your friends like then? Um. All bad. All bad kids, pretty much, you know. Um, most of the kids I grew up with, a lot of them are dead. A lot of them overdosed on drugs. A lot of them are in prison serving life or in jail. Um, that's it, you know. And what was the mafia? Did you know much about the mafia? Yeah, I did. Then? I was born around it, so my uncle was Fat Andy Ruggiano. My grandfather was affiliated with them as well. Uh, my cousin Johnny Boy was a Gambino hitter. Um, my whole family was around it. So it was pretty much all around me when I grew up. I was best friends with Gotti's grandson. One of the other grandsons worked for me when I got older. All of us were related. You know, it was just a soap opera. Did anybody ever tell you, though, listen, don't go down this route? Because we all know it's fucked no. up now. But- um, not that they didn't tell me, but, you know, um, I mean, they, no, but nobody in that neighborhood's really going to tell you don't do that because everybody was trying to do that. You know what I mean? So we really didn't have nobody telling us that. My mother, I, was out, I moved out the house when I was like 17 years old, so... You know? Who was the p- family's in power at that moment? 
what families yeah. in my neighborhood was Bonanno Gambino. That was the most in Howard Beach Ozone Park. That was what was over there. Gambino Bonanno. That's what you were going to end up with if you grew up in Howard Beach Ozone Park. Was that an attraction for you straight away? Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. You know what sort of what age did you start getting into sort of crime? And that mafia crime. Fifteen, sixteen years old. I started off young, uh, petty stuff. You know, and then I kept getting worse and worse. So how do you get recruited then? I wouldn't say, I, I could say recruited, but I was, they always look for the bad kids. They don't want an altar boy. They don't want a kid that, you know, is a good kid. They look for the bad kids and they look for the kids that, you know, are capable of doing anything you need them to do. You know what I mean? So I was basically recruited by the Gambinos at first, but they really weren't into the violence. And the Bonanno side was. So the crew I got with, with the Bananos, they were still believed in guns and violence and hurting and killing. Where the Gambino guys, I was supposed to go with Altruki on them, they were all about money. The Bananos were both, money and violence. So I had told this story before why I went with the Banano crime families because I had done something. Somebody tried to kill me in a highway and they shot my friend through the throat. And my other friend in the back, I knew who it was. I wanted to kill him. I went to the Gambinos. I said, I'm killing this kid. They were like, no, 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 you're not doing that. His father's a wise guy, da, da. I said, I right, fuck you. So I went to the other side. I went to the Bananos. And they're like, yeah, get him. So how is that in the mafia when you try and switch sides? Is that allowed? No, I was never on record yet with somebody. So I was floating. I didn't know who I was going to go with. You know, I was supposed to go with Gambinos because I was born Gambino. But my best friend was Bobby Gialonzo. And his uncle was Vinny Asaro and Ronnie Gialonzo. They were both captains and soldiers and ranks. And their whole family was just the structure of the Bananos. So I had my choice, literally. And I ended up going with the Bonanno guys. Who tried to kill you? Um, this kid, Phil Galena. We had beat him up and cracked a bottle over his head, me and Chris Cagnata, and um, he put money on our heads with the Albanians. And they shot into a car. Was coming, we were coming out of a nightclub, and um, we were on the highway, and they shot into a car at us, tried to kill us, tried to kill me in the car. I ended up shooting my innocent friend and another friend of mine. How does that play in your mind? Well, you know, we were pretty, you know, I was pretty mad, you know, because uh, that's not how you carry out a hit. You know what I mean? You're supposed to wait for me to come out of my house or sit on me, you know, shoot innocent people. You know what I mean? So um, he left after that. He went to Italy. He knew, he knew he didn't get his targets. And, um, you know, I went back. I shot his house up multiple times. I blew his cars up. Uh, we threw a half a stick of dynamite in uh, his brother's pickup truck with his brother in it. We tried to shoot his brother with a shotgun. You know, we were going hard at them. We actually made his bro We actually made him and his family move. Did your friend die? No, he didn't. Miraculously, he survived. He got hit right through the throat, right through here. And the doctor just said that he missed everything right as much. He oh, died man. twice on the operating table. They brought him back. And, um, you know, he's like in the record, like the medical record books almost, like for being alive. How old were you at this? Well, I was only 20. Um, this was August 2005, so I was 21 years old. Are you fully committed at this time with that life? I was in, involved, yes. I was, you mean, was I involved? Yeah, with yes, I was. Totally, Heavily, yeah. yes, yes. When did you start kind of making noise and g gaining attention? 20 for years old. We were doing armed robberies. We were doing stick-ups, me and Bobby G. We were, we were, we were holding guys up a lot on card games, uh, drug dealers, you know. We were doing scores, jewelry stores. You know, we started getting that reputation as uh, being uh, big arm robbers and violence, you know, stabbing people, beating guys with bats. You know, we started getting that reputation of from just me and him doing our own thing. You know what I mean? But they knew we were related and we could have went anywhere we wanted. And then finally, when Ronnie really had enough is, um, and they were basically like, all right, you just got to stop now. Is uh, we, we had stuck up a guy coming out of a card game and it happened to be a, a big shots card game, a Gambino card game, and we almost we should have got killed for it. And um, we had to give everything back. I ended up pistol whipping the guy. It was a bad situation, and um, we had to give all the stuff back. And Ronnie basically told us, you know, we had to get a little bit of a beating, and um, basically uh, told us this is it, like no more of this shit. You know, he's, and we didn't stop. Obviously, we told him yeah, but we were still robbing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but we just you know did a little better. What was yeah. that like when you had to get a beating? And, and face it. Well, it's better than getting killed. You know what I mean? It's just that, it, you know, you never know. Because people say, oh, murder. Murder was still around then. You know, did we think we were going to die? I did for a second because um, that was very disrespectful what we did. Um, but when they made me meet them in a funeral parlor basement. Yeah, so it's to scare us. I almost was going to leave. I wasn't going to go. You know what I mean? I was, <laughs> Fuck that, Yeah, man. I, I wouldn't have went in there. But I knew I was going with Bobby G, and that's Vinny Asaro's nephew. I'm still Fat Andy's nephew, even though he's dead. My cousins didn't cooperate yet, Anthony. So I was like, I don't think they're going to kill me. But anyway, they handed us over to my people, and Ronnie and them had to beat up me and Bobby a little bit. Nothing bad, but just to give us a... a you warning. have to get something. A warning. 
not even a warning. You have to get something, you know what I mean, for what we did. You know, we disrespected mm -hmm. their turf. It could look like the Bonanno sent us there to do that. You know what I mean? It could look like they said, fuck their place, go do it, you know? Mm -hmm. How many people are in the families at this time? So usually all the families stay equal. Um, you always got at least 200 soldiers, made members, and then you have about 27 captains. About that around each family will have that. Uh, boss, underboss, consiglia, and then you have associates waiting to come up and become members. So you, you pick, uh, the Bonanno family probably had at that time with associates, 500 people it's through the five boroughs. It's still a strong army, though. Isn't it? It's a good, it, and we all know each other. You know what I mean? So at the time, it was pretty, you know, strong. That's before Joe Messino cooperated, you know? Was it more political in, very, in your era? Very. Years everything's, ago. everything's political. Everything's rules. Everything's, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. You break rules, you got to get dealt with, or, you know, whatever ha might happen, you know? How did you deal with rules? I, I broke them. I was bad with them. Yeah, I was not good with them. Not at all. Do you become a threat, though, then? No. I, in the ass? I mean, yeah, I did, but they liked me a lot because I was very capable, so they knew, you know, they had something good. You know what I mean? Why did you enjoy violence so much? I don't know. I can't explain it. I was just good at it, getting it done. Um, I like hunting people. You know, I could say, like, I, I would like to sit on them, you know, see where I get them. It was kind of fun to me. Sounds sick, but it's the truth, you know. Um, I guess I learned that from doing armed robberies. Because it's the same thing in hunting someone, you know. You got to scope them out, get them, whatever. So when they started making me get, you know, beat people up, shoot people, it's the same thing. You just basically sit on them, hunting them, the best place to get them, you know. What was it like doing your first armed robbery? Uh, yeah, so it was nerve-wracking because to switch over, you know, to, to guns and doing that, um, you know, it's, it, you just got to, I was, when we're getting taught to do that, just do it. Don't think, you know, don't think everything that's going to go wrong at that moment. Just, just do it. So I started getting, I was a ballsy kid, and um, yeah, we were just running down, you were guns. And, you know, I would shoot you, so, you know. And yeah. that was just from a, a young age? Yeah, I started at like 18 doing armed robberies. Yeah. How many in your team? I've done, I mean, when I profit, I mean, literally, you know, I can't lie, obviously, because, um, you know, I have profits. Like, you, everything I admitted to, mm -hmm. you can't bullshit because they go and look at your crimes. I probably did over 150 robberies. They had me down as one of the worst robbery teams in like the five boroughs for organized crime, not gangs, but for the Italian community, for the five boroughs. There's no bullshit. They had us down as one of the worst robbery teams. When when did you start to realize that you had something about you? You were violent. You were capable. When I when I, when Vinny was bragging about me in social clubs, I knew that I was gonna be something. And who's Vinny? Asaro. And who's he? A legendary gangster from the Bernardo family. So I knew when he was bragging about me and his nephew in social clubs, I says, ah. Oh, yeah, we're definitely gonna make it in this life. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> he don't he don't talk good about nobody. <laughs> you never, I never knew he liked me. Always yelling at me. Is that because he tried to gate yeah. you? Yeah. So when he sees guys that are tough, he tries to knock you down, and he don't want you walk around with your chest out. So he'll make you know I'm the boss. You shut the fuck up, and you just uh, you know. So when did you get involved with the mafia? Um, I'd say strongly twenty years old. And what happens then when they come calling? Um. You have to do it. You never say no. I was taught you just never say no. If you want to prosper in that life, no don't exist. You understand? So anything they order you do, you just do it. And you were willing to do anything? Yeah. So, I mean, it was funny because they would tell me to do something and then they think like I'm doing it in a day or two. I come back in a couple hours. I'm like, oh, it's done. They're like, already? I was like, yeah, it's done already. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I was on it. I wanted to please them and show them that, I, you know, I was the best guy I had. How many was on your crew? My crew was... Um, Jerry Asaro was the crew captain, him and his father, Vinny Asaro. Um, Jackie and, my, and Ronnie were two acting captains. Then you had Mike Palmacio, Mike Padavona, Ricky Kessler, who was a tough, tough guy. Um, me, Bobby Gialonzo, and then a few other guys. But those are the main guys. Uh, Jimmy Unit, Jimmy Aurora, uh, Frankie Bones, Pudgy. There was a bunch of us. How the fuck do you remember all those names? Well, we, we, we were together every day. I mean, this is not um, acquaintances. We're in a social club together every day. You were hanging out every day, you know? Who Priming the, every day. Who was the most violent? For my crew? Yeah. Um, at the time, Bobby Gialonzo, my partner. He what? was vicious because he was with those razor blades and knives. He was like, you know, into that hacking shit. You know what I mean? I wasn't. I'll shoot you. These guys into that fucking massacre shit, you know? Cutting people up. Hold your face down. Cut. We thought one time we were fighting in a nightclub. i never forget this. It was so gross. And we thought... We, we seen Bobby with his knees planted in the guy's chest. So it looked like he's slapping him. He's got a fucking box cutter. He's friggin' hacking his face up in his head. We were calling him Bobby Chainsaw Massacre after that. This kid was like, he was nuts with a knife. He couldn't put one in his hand. So he was definitely the most gruesome. You know, but I was the most ballsy. Because I'll shoot you in broad daylight in front of everybody. Did the police know 
who you were. Yeah, at the time. Well, we didn't know that. See, the FBI, you'll never know that they're watching you until they come. But we knew our faces had to be on the wall because we're hanging out with people that are, you know, big in that mob, in that family, you know? Does that bring heat, though? When Violence? Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah, absolutely. So but, they, but you understand, you have to be violent. If, if, if you're a loan shark and you're loaning money and you're a punk, you're not a tough guy, why the fuck am I going to pay you? What am I scared of? Like, what is it? You, oh, you're going to kill me? You never did nothing. You never beat nobody in it on your life. What am I scared of? What's the fear? Mm -hmm. You understand? So what our crew, when they say, oh, we're going to hurt you, people are nervous because we were really doing that. Walking in your business. A guy owed me will beat your brain in your business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In front of your customers. What sort of jobs were you getting? Um, a lot of deadbeat lists. You know, um, guys that don't, aren't paying, they're backed up or... Um, you know, uh, a couple of guys in our crew that weren't tough, they'd say, go help him out, collect the money. This guy disrespected this one, did that. You know, go slap him around, go to this. It wasn't always shoot him, beat him up. That's only on circumstances where you really disrespected us or you, it could be one dollar. If you say, fuck you, I'm not paying you, that's how you get killed. Uh -huh. That's the best way to get killed. If you could, you could owe $300,000 and you could come to us and go, listen, I can't pay, I'm jammed up, help me. We'll work with you. But if you say, I'm not paying, that's it. How was it being in the mafia at that time, especially with the late 80s, 90s, with everybody turning, everybody wearing wires, right. everybody cooperating? Was it in the back of your mind that this is a fucked up life or did you just want to be part of we that? We just wanted to be a part of it. We really weren't thinking about that. We're like, ah, no, that, that's, we're not like that. You know what I mean? So we didn't care. Um, and like I said, there was a lot of crew still. In the early 2000s, that neighborhood was flooded out with organized crime. Did you feel untouchable? Uh, yeah, I did for a little second. because Not because of who I was with, but because I was a pistol packer. I was really bad with guns. I always had them on me. You why, know? Why were you so fascinated with guns? I don't know. I picked it up. It was my downfall in life. I picked them up at 16 years old. I just liked them. Sense of power? I, yeah, I just liked it. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe because I was a scrawny, skinny kid and I always needed weapons. I didn't get bigger until I was older. So I figured to win the battle with a weapon. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess and then I I picked up the gun and then um that was it. I never put it down. Gave you some power. Yeah. And you know I was just I was capable of using them. Well, some people not everyone's capable of using a gun. People say oh it's easy to shoot someone. I know a lot of guys that froze up with guns. They don't, they're very scared of them. You know. Yeah, I had an SAS man on and he says over ninety percent of people with guns miss miss their target because they're turning. Their well now, head, now they're and, shaking. and not only that they're scared. You know some yeah. guy you know you think it's not easy to go sit on someone and then hop out on them. You know. And shoot them. You got to be a ballsy dude. You got to, you know, you got to be willing to do it. What was it like shooting someone for the first time? It's, you, well, like, like it says, if you're not hitting them in the head or a main target, you don't even know you hit them. You do know that. If it's a low caliber gun, you might not even know you hit them. You know that, right? I mean, if you know, we play with guns, if you shoot somebody, you don't hit them in the stomach, you don't hit them in the head, you might not know he's hit. You just get out of there. You'll know later on. <laughs> I mean, right there and there, you might not even know you hit them. <laughs> I know guys that were shot in their ass, their leg, didn't even know they were hit until they got home. My, my, um, Ronnie Gialonzo's brother in law, Mike Kinsey, he's my good friend. He got shot six times in his stomach with a 22. He had no clue till he got into his house, laying in his bed with blood coming all out of him. Yeah. What's the worst thing you've seen in that life? What's the worst thing I've seen? Yeah. Um, the worst thing I've seen. Uh, me and my partner I beat a guy nearly to death with a, um, um, a tire iron and brass knuckles. We physically, we thought he was dead. Did you not beat one of your friends up and he shot himself as well? Um, we've heard our own friends, but I mean, this was the most gruesome thing I felt we did. We split his head open with a tire iron. We beat him with brass knuckles. The guy looked pretty much dead. You know what I'm saying? How is that when you get told to harm a friend or Yo, kill a friend? That's hard. So, um, I did shoot one of my friends, right? But he had broke a cardinal sin. He robbed, he robbed us, he robbed a, one of uh, Ronnie's main earners. And he was a real tough guy. Chris Cagnata, he's one of the worst guys around. And, um... Yeah, that was grimy what I did to him. He trusted me. I met up with him and I shot him. And everyone knew about that. His girlfriend hit me with a car. Yeah, she's a ballsy girl. I like that. She respect cracked me that. with the car. Yeah, yeah. respect uh -huh. that. She should have uh, been in the Gina Palmer. Her. Yeah, she cracked me with the car. I never forget that. I put four shots at him and um, she fucking ran me over. Put me in the air. Yeah. Some of the women. Broad daylight. Some of the women are tough. April 2006. Broad daylight. Yeah. What are you thinking when you get hit with the car? Well, I got nervous because I wasn't supposed to kill him. And then my dad was with me at the time. And um, I went back to the house. And I says, go check out what happened. Because my dad, is, you know, he don't care. He's like, ah, oh, he went over. He said, there's yellow tape everywhere. I'm thinking I killed him because there's yellow tape. You know what I mean? I'm not understanding they tape it off for any kind of fire, anything with guns. 
So um, then later on, I found out that I didn't, you know, kill him. But I was happy about that because the order wasn't to kill him. When was the first time you were in prison? 18. What for? Uh, kilo of cocaine. Yeah, you were, were not supplying gear with your granddad? Yeah. Me and my That's fucked up. Yeah. Man. What grandpa. chance you got, mate, when you're fucking shifting gear yeah. with your granddad? Yeah, so my grandpa was a street dude, um, and uh, he got set, we got set up by a guy named Danny Marcha. Um, he had told my grandfather he needed a brick of coke, and my grandfather says, oh, I got to get this guy a kilo. I says, well, I get good prices. What are you getting it for? I says, I'll get it for you for cheaper. We'll make more money on it. And it was a sting operation. It was a setup. Yeah, so we got busted. We went to CVS. They were coming out of CVS. We were like customers, but they were cops. So it was a sting operation, and we um, that's when the first time I went to prison. What was that like for you? It was adolescent Rikers Island. It was rough. It was real bad. Um, I didn't understand it at first. You know, I didn't really interacted with um, with gang members. Always Italians, you know, stuff. I really didn't interact with gang members that much. When I came home, I started using gang members because I seen how capable they were. Mm-hmm. They had that. They had cojones. But before that, I never really interacted with them. And then adolescent Rikers Island, it was rough. You know, did prison make you worse? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing. Is they don't, they're not built for rehabilitation. Well, we're going into the worst county in the country. It's the worst prison in the United States of America. Many mafia in there? No, Italians. none. None. You're on your own. Look. Only federal has all of us. State, they're not really in there. How are you treated? Well, they like the Italians, gang members. They love that mafia shit. They love all of that. But at first, they didn't know anything about me. I was getting into a lot of fights. Got my teeth chipped. I got jumped. A whole bunch of shit, you know? Lost some fights. These kids are strong. <laughs> I was, yeah. yeah, I was losing some shit, you know, but I never backed down. And then um, I got cool with everybody. I ended up doing 19 months and then I came home. And then um, that was it. I was full blown on the street. Your granddad, he, he passed away in prison? He died in prison, yes. From that? No, another case. He had came home and then he got caught up with another case. So your granddad's selling gear. He's in prison. Your dad's a fucking bank robber. My dad was uh, yeah, my dad was really wild when he was younger. My father was a real nut when he was in his seventies. My dad's older. My dad would have been almost seventy years old now, but my father was was wild in the street, you know. Did he see the route you were going down? He was gone most of my life. He was in Canada. We really would just see when he came back into your Well, life I never I always tell this story now once in a while. My dad had robbed somebody for like eight hundred thousand and took off to Canada. That's what really happened. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows the story. He ended up robbing uh he's a nut. Yeah, he took off with eight hundred thousand in a baseball bag. He's supposed to transport a whole ton of tons of cocaine, and he had the robin, and he had to go to Canada. My cousin Anthony saved me because they were going to kidnap me to get the money back. Yeah, my mother. He came to see me and my mother in a hotel before he left. He had friggin' eight hundred thousand in cash. He gave us a few some money out of it, and that was it. And took off, and I didn't see him for years. Then he came back, and um, that was it. That's what was it like when he came back? Your dad? Well, he went to jail out in Canada, so he came back to stay with me, so that's why. What was it like when he stayed with you? Uh, he was crazy. Could but you... I got along with him, but he was crazy. You know, he was, he's a, you know, he's a crazy guy. Could you build a relationship with him? What was that Yeah, going? no, we were, we were basically, you know, friends and everything, but um, I ended up going to jail for him. Why? Uh, he got jumped at a bar, and uh, they hit him in the head with a hammer. And I went there blazing, and I got caught with the gun firing it and everything. So I ended up doing three to six years for that. What age? Uh, 22. So you've always been in a prison? Yeah, came life. home at 26 and then um, right back to work with my guys. What was prison like the second time? Yeah, it was still rough. You know, um, at that time I was a little older. I, st- I went to the state prison and I had a real problem with sex offenders. I didn't like them. Yeah. And they put me in a sex offender jail. So we had a real problem with that. So I didn't make it in that jail long. We were terrorizing them. And uh, I had met my good friend Frankie Pasqua in there. And um, me and him got really close. He was a mob guy. And um, we got kicked out of that prison fast. We ended up uh, cutting somebody, beating another guy up. We were just bad in there. We, I got kicked out the green. Green was one of the worst mediums in the state. And then I went on from there. But I was constantly in shit, you know. And plus, you have to keep your reputation up because it follows you. If they find out you're a punk in jail, it goes back to the street. You know what I mean? So I had to keep up the reputation, you know. Why did they put you in next to the sex cases? Because it's like this. In the state, it's random. You just go into a hub. It don't matter. They can send you into uh, any hub they want. I went to Lakeview. That's Buffalo. And I ended up couldn't stay there. So they stripped me to Groveland. Groveland is a, has a sex offender program in it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So 75% of the population was fucking sex offenders. And I was not okay with that. So I ended up getting kicked out of that spot. And what? going to like a really bad medium. What did you do when you came out after that sentence? 
oh, I came home right to a deadbeat list. Ronnie was so happy because Ronnie was serving time at the time. And Ronnie was so happy I was out. And he's like, you know, I got a whole bunch of work for you to do. Right back to work. Straight away? Yep. I wasn't home six months. I shot somebody from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were you willing to die in that life? Yeah, I mean, I would have. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, at that time, I would have took a bullet for him as well. You know? So, um, uh, yeah, I was willing to die. Who did you respect the most? I respected it in that life. Yeah. I don't want to say Vinny Asaro, but I definitely looked up to him the most, Vinny. But Ronnie G, I respected a lot as well. So I would say it'd be out of them two in that life. They both trained me. That's who I worked directly for. So that's who schooled me on that mostly. So I would say them two the most. So you get out of prison and then you ended up back in prison. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Again? I had a 50-month run and then it was lights out over for me. What happened? Oh, they had me on everything. They were investigating us for years. We had no idea. Yeah, everybody was wearing wires. My cousin was wearing a wire. Uh, the other guy was wearing a wire. We had like four wires on us. Body taps, car taps, you name it. My crew was making millions of dollars. My boss bought a $3 million home. You know, he was hot boy with that. He goes and builds a mansion on the corner, looked like an estate. Um, he had no job, no income, but he's living in a house that looks like it's on MTV Cribs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was insane. So um, we were just front and center. We were doing violence. We were making money. We were like, they called our case the real mafia, the last real mafia case of the five boroughs. It had everything on it. Violence, money, everything. 21 people. No more of that, you know? How much were you making? But, at my high, I never lie, um, at my high was about forty to 50000 a month. That's the highest I ever went to. But I would never see it because I was a party guy. So if I made fifty, I spent eighty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't even know if I made it. It was like, all right, you know? How much were we drinking, cocaine? Oh, no, was I, just... I partied here and there, but I was more of a um, club guy, nightclub guy. But I went out from Monday to Sunday. So when Ronnie was in jail, I got away with all of that. When he came home, I couldn't really do that no more. But before he came home... I was just telling my buddy that um, from 2010 to 2013, I was partying like a rock star. When he got out, it was no more of that, you know? Could you party in that lifestyle if the bosses were out and on it? Uh, I wouldn't have got away with... When Ronnie was away, I got I got away with a lot more, but they assigned me with Vinny. Vinny said I was an old-timer, though, but, you know, I got away with a lot more because Ronnie would have been on me more if he, if he was out because he's always kept telling everybody, you got to watch this kid. He'll tear the whole fucking city up. You got to watch him. You got to be on him because once you let this kid loose, he starts going crazy. So that was a little bit of a problem I had, you know? I gave them a lot of headaches, you know? Do you miss that life? Yeah, I do. Um, I miss, well, I miss my friends. You know, I miss some people I came up with, but right now I live a pretty good life. I have great friends around me, great people. It's like I have a whole new life with all great friends again, but I definitely miss, um, how can I say it without sounding like I glorify it, but I used to like doing what I did. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I did. I used to like it. Yeah, I can respect that. Yeah, I did. I did used to like it. You know, like, um, yeah. uh, I was a pistol-packing nut. That's the reputation I created. Um, I had a good name. You know what I mean? I was known everywhere. Um, but, you know, we were doing a lot of fucked up shit, too. A lot a lot of shit comes with that life that we were doing. You know, grimy shit. And, uh, you know, like I said, now I sit back. I have a lot of victims that contact me still to this day. Yeah, it's pretty weird. I had a man on come face-to-face -face with the man he kidnapped and tortured. 30 years ago. Right. Yeah, I and, have um, I have some shit like that. Yeah, and again, you can see this distress in both these men. Right. Because we're all fucking human. We all feel, no matter how game or mad we think we are, everything comes to the head. Right. Whether it's fucking 10 years, 30 years, 40 years, something comes to the top where we end up having a meltdown or something because we're all sensitive beings. No matter how many guys people fucking shoot or robberies have done. Right. That, people are sensitive, especially men, but how's that feeling when victims approach you well and, and like i said you see with me there wasn't many guys running around like me for the mafia organized crime anymore that's what the problem was if i was in the 80s and 90s i'm a dime a dozen everybody was like that mm -hmm. you had a hundred shooters uh guys that were dying to kill someone make a name for themselves in my area there wasn't really too many it was a handful of us so we stood out like sore thumbs you know what i mean so i mean to get to the point we to get to your question when they contact me i tell them you know the game it's not personal it's just business you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. You were a drug dealer, I robbed you. We knew you had a lot of money, we wanted it. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. It's not like we had something personal against you, you know what I'm saying? So you were taxing a lot of drug dealers back then? Yeah, we did. How was that? Because you, you know yourself, the mafia, they don't have drugs, but everybody seemed to fucking sell we drugs. We were all selling it. Yeah, it's all bullshit. You know, but you won't. So it's like this. 
the co the the mob will be like, all right, you'll go grab a drug deal, for instance. You know, all right, yeah, I'm gonna give you five thousand a month to protect me. We'll take the money. Yeah, yeah, we got your back. If it goes to a table, we'll know, we don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's basically a Ponzi scheme. We really can't protect you. You know what I mean? Unless you want to lie and say, oh, that's not drug money. It's loan shark money. You know what I'm saying? To lie and switch the story. Vinny used to do that. But um, we really can't protect drug dealers. So we're just better off robbing them. Because if you shake them down and then we go sit down for them, we can't sit for them. You can't mm -hmm. sit for drugs. No wise guy's going to get involved in it. You're not allowed. What was your daily routine like? Oh, I was just fucking collecting money, constantly scheming, plotting. You know, seeing what it needed to be done, uh, going to the club, social club, you know, checking up on, I had to watch card games as well. You know, Ronnie had a, a card game. I had to always make sure it was all right. Everything to make sure the money was, you know, operating. So when did it all come on top? What year with the police? The oh, uh, in September 2014, I was arrested. Yeah. What are you thinking then? Because it's not as if you've not done prison time. You've done a few sentences. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's not as if you fucking turned straight away and cooperated. What was the... Yeah. Uh, what's the moment then when it comes on top you see people wearing wires because it's the same patterns the I'm first of you, all the police fucking I'm gonna, everything. I'm gonna make you laugh right now when I first got locked up I didn't realize how bad it was I didn't know what I was being locked up for my cousin set me up I was going to a wedding and I went into his house I stood over I walked out the house and I got stormed by fucking 100 cops undercovers it was state organized crime task force I'm wondering like I asked him I said use the FBI they said no so I'm like, all right, I'm good. I was in the FBI. I'm thinking like some bullshit. You know what I mean? I go to a fucking arraignment. I had no idea my cousin set me up and they said it at arraignment. And then when they said the charges, I knew I was in trouble. Uh, home invasions, uh, gun sell. I never sold guns. Somehow I got charged with selling guns, gun possession. I had the time already for that. So I knew I was in trouble in the state with the guns and, the, and that stuff and the robberies. And then Florida rearrested me a week later. And then I was another armed robbery on a jewelry store. So I knew I was looking at a lot of time. And then when I got the actual discovery for my case, my lawyer had to wheel it in. He had to wheel it in because it was wiretaps this high. I was only 2,200 of the pages. And my lawyer says, this is bad. He's like, this is federal. You have also federal problems. I says, so what am I looking at? I says, do you think you get me 20 years for everything? He goes, not a chance in hell. There's not a chance in hell you're going to get 20 years for this stuff. He goes, you're going to get ping-ponged all over. Florida's looking to give you 10 years. State's going to give you seven. And the feds is going to fry you. They're going to fry you, you know, because all the crimes, obviously, they had me on all kinds of shootings, uh, robberies, home invasions, arsons, assaults, everything, loan shock, and illegal gambling. And, and, you know, I'm looking at 40 years, man. Blow trial, natural life. Because, obviously, the same patterns of people wearing wires, was nobody getting searched stuff. Party down. You never think that, you know, because why are you wearing a wire? What did you really get caught for? My cousin wore a wire because he was selling drugs to an undercover with his baby in his arms, pulling the drugs out of a fucking backpack. How do you even give him a deal? You know what I mean? But they wanted us. So, you know, he, he set me up. You know? What are you thinking when there's a chance you're getting life? I tried to get his dog killed from Rikers Island. And I love animals. <laughs> I tried to have little Gotti. He was with me, little Gotti, and my friend Fat Matt kill his dog. But um, that's how mad I was, and I love animals, and that's how I wanted to get him because he loved his dog Massimo, was like this big bull massive. And I was trying to get the dog whacked out, <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah, we know his wife was walking it because his wife was living with his grandfather, Courtney, and we were trying to get the do I was trying to get the dog killed. Yeah, that's how mad I was. But then eventually, you know, I threw in the towel myself. So, 19 months later, I I cooperated. Yeah. How many people were on the indictment? 21. How many people cooperated? Oh, secretly? Oh, dozens. Informants that weren't never locked up? Dozens. I know five guys that were wires. I know guys that committed multiple crimes. They're not even on the indictment. Everybody knows they cooperated. I mean, you're probably talking on my case. The 21 guys didn't cooperate. There, there was probably about 19 cooperators total that were given information and wearing wires. Do you think a lot of people were trying to get into the mafia knowing they always had that free pass of cooperating if they ever get caught? No. I never thought I'd do that no, shit, No, but are some people? Um... I mean, no, because, like, I'm, a guy shouldn't be cooperating over five years or ten years. You know what I mean? Like, that's not even, like, that's nothing. You know, when you start getting into the 30s, 40s, 50s, life sentences, you don't know where someone stands at. But for the most part, I never thought somebody would cooperate over five years or ten years. You don't even think that. Like, you got to do five years, bro. I could do that in my head. I did that ratting. I had to do six years still. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not time. So if you're cooperating over that, you should have never been in the street. You know what I mean? Uh, a guy like me that's facing forever and a day... 
you know, um, it's rough. You know, it's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, how does that change things? Because I know people watch, they go, oh, there's snitches and this yeah. and that. Listen, we, we understand it, but if you're getting off for the 150 years, it, wasn't about it the time. changes the game, doesn't it? Right. I was mad about a lot of other things. I'm not going to make excuses. I did what I did, but there was a lot of other things that my little brother was getting seven years. That was big, hard for me, and I had to get him out of it, and I got him out of it. But, um, you know, there's a lot of things that I didn't like Ronnie did, and a lot of things was going on. But um, for the most part, it was hard to, to say, you know, I'm 31 years old at the time. You're going to be home possibly when you're 74 years old. You know what I mean? Are you naive to a lot of that lifestyle when you're in it as well, thinking, like you said earlier, everything's untouchable. You never think you'll get caught. You're thinking it's... Because it seems like a movie. I didn't, think I'd, I, I didn't think I'd be facing that much time. I didn't realize the crimes I was doing because the RICO law is so crazy. Their laws are so different. Like, you could shoot a guy in the leg for an organization and get 20 years. Where in the state you shoot a guy, you get five years, three years. When they grab the crime, it becomes you did it to up your position in the organization. They they worded hor horribly. You cop out to these ridiculous guidelines, 10 to life, 15 to life. It's up to the judge. You got minimum mandatories. It's crazy. Their laws are just sick. The RICO law is insane. So when you got RICO, it's it. With violence and shootings and robberies, you're done. You know, you, you, you're never you're gonna see, you're gonna be away for a long time. For the UK audience, what is RICO? RICO, RICO Racketeering Act. So it's it was built for Italian mafia. And they can never get the guys in the back in, in the scene, and they can never get the guys calling the shots. So they built it. They built the RICO Act to get the guys out of the shot calls. They basically can indict you on hearsay. No evidence. He say hearsay. Understand? Yeah. No, because I've I could just say you did it with me. And you're organized crime. You, the shoe fits, you're going to wear it. If it's they, crazy. Do you think if they want you, they get you? Yes. They're, with organized crime, they had unlimited funds. At the time when they were powerful, they could extra any amount of money they want. We were over terrorism in New York at one time. Mm -hmm. We were more important than terrorists. Think about that. So you must have been bringing a lot of heat to the... Well, I was bringing a lot of heat, definitely, because we were doing a lot of violence and people wanted us off the street, you know? Could you have been killed? Yeah, absolutely. They made a few attempts on me. When? Uh, they tried to kill me in my house with a machine gun. They shot my house up with a machine gun. Chris Cagnata. I was. They tried to kill me in front of my house. Another time with a shotgun. Um, they tried to kill me in the highway. Just, you know, beef and stuff, you know? I wasn't invincible. How do you sleep? When you're I just sleep with a gun under my pillow. <laughs> you was sick. <laughs> yeah, my ex-girlfriend used to laugh. I have it right under the pillow at all times. Always had it under my pillow. How was the know? paranoia? Huh? I, I was um yeah, I mean, I always circled the block. I always watched everything, you know, because like I said, I was doing a lot of shit. And, you know, robbing drug deals, too. They could put money on you as well, you know. But, um, yeah, I, I was very aware of my surroundings. So how long were you, were you in prison for before you cooperated? 19 months. What's that decision when you decide to cooperate? There's a piece of... It was you... really random because I had no intentions on it at first. And then I just got, like, a, a weird visit. And I knew it didn't make sense because the day that I was getting a visit, I wasn't expecting nobody. And it wasn't even a visit day. And a white shirt came to see me, which is like a high rank officer. They don't come to bring you to a fucking visit. It's a regular CO. And I looked at her, and I'm known to the building. I was in that building a very long time. I was causing a lot of havoc in that building, fighting with gang members, uh, holding down kids that couldn't protect themselves. So every all the officers knew me. I was in this house for a particular long time. So everybody knew I was in newspapers. You know, everyone knew who I was in that building. And um, they, they, they told me, um, you have a visit. And I looked at her. In the cell, and I says, visit. I says, there's no visit today. I looked at her, just like, I says, the beds? She goes, I said, all right. I said, I'm going down there. Fuck, this is the time I was just, you know, let me see what they got to say. I went down there. It was the agents Rob and Adam. They were known, known banana crime family agents. I already knew who they were. And um, they says, this is the last time, only time we're going to come see you. Um, you are indicted by the government. You will be indicted. You are, like, you're already indicted. Um... You will be dying in prison, most likely. That's your outcome. Nobody has your back no more. You know, on wiretaps, obviously, things. Me and Ronnie weren't uh, good anymore, really. And um, they says, we're going to give you the opportunity right now. And I just agreed. What happens then when you agree to cooperate? Um, is that an easy decision, or is that a decision where you feel as if something dies inside? I just, you know, it was a little more than that being said, and I just said, you know, uh, you know, I just thought about it. I says, listen, I, I got to get out of this shit with my brother, everybody. I says, yeah. I says, give me the fucking paper. And I had to sign a paper, and I had to meet up with the prosecutors. And that was it. How long do you speak to the prosecutors for? Well, I had a lot of shit. So when you got a proffer and as much crimes that I had, you know, they have to know everything about you, everything you did. So I, I sat with them a lot. 
So this is why even with these podcasts, I know people shout snitching at, but these podcasts are better because people can actually talk what they've done because they've got a free pass to I talk. Do. Yeah, yeah. If you well, I know I, people come on. And I think you because the well, people incriminate themselves. Even the guy who was talking about the two pack murder. He's full. So, uh, Ramandi. He says know. he was in the car at the two pack murder and he just got. Um, oh yeah, yeah, he got indicted yeah. for it. Yeah. Well, you see. If you don't have coverage, you see, I, I profit, so I have coverage in all my crimes. I could talk about anything. But you don't really know because if a guy didn't have an F, uh, a case for the government or didn't profit, you can't talk about your crimes if it's murder because there's no statute of limitation. They'll come lock you up. There's guys that just bullshit on here and say anything. You know what I mean? There's no real crime. It's just fake. You know what I so mean? You so you can back everything you see up as well. I mean, that's, it's public knowledge. Yeah. I mean, that's documented in federal paperwork. <laughs> you know, I'm people. associate one all over my indictment, which just consists of guns, shootings, armed robberies. That's the FBI of my... So I'm associate one. Ricky Kessler was associate two. Vinny Rossetti was associate three. And Bobby Gialonzo was associate four, which I don't know why. I still can't figure it out to this day. All the ones that were that were cooperators. And Bobby G, my partner, was never locked up. Well, I still can't figure it out to this day because they won't tell you. Was associate four. They never put his name in the paperwork. If you're, when you're a cooperator, they don't put your name in the paperwork. And I kept saying, that don't make sense. Because when you were on both sides, you know. You could just look at paperwork now and know who's cooperating. He looked like a rat on paperwork. See when you're going And that's the boss's nephew. See when you cooperate, if you've got to have a lawyer there, because how the fuck can you trust them? If Because you, you may admit to things... And they might just add to the indictment. How do you sit there with trust? Well, they knew everything already. They needed me because I was just checking off the boxes. You know what I mean? They knew everything pretty much. They would, I was just co I was confirming everything. I was the last guy to cooperate. They already had a case on investigation with guys wearing wires for years. So I was just, you know, dotting the I's, you want to say, you know, crossing the T's. That was it. And what happens if you lie once? Oh, you're fucked. They'll rip your fucking deal up. Yeah, you'll do it for no reason. And how long did you end up doing? Almost six years. So you still done a six? I had to. I had so much shit going on. Did you have to go to court? Yeah, I had to get sentenced at the end. <laughs> yeah, you still you don't it's you, a you, you don't even know what you're gonna get. You just cop out the guidelines. It's up to a federal judge. You don't get a deal like oh you get five years. You go in front of a judge with a five K letter, and then it's up to the judge. What happens if you got a twenty rate? Is that not possible? He give you anything he wants. Give you twenty years if he wants. Even if you cooperate. Yes. There's no, it's up to, there's no agreement. There's nothing saying, this is what you'll get. This is your cap. It's, I copped out to 15 to life guidelines. And with a 5K, he could go anywhere from one day to a hundred years. That's a risk as well. Is anybody it ever is, got more you, than 10? Yeah. For cooperating? Absolutely. I know guys that got 25 years after cooperation. Better than life. You guys got six, seven murders, seven, mur eight murders. You know what I'm saying? That's, you know, New York just gives the best deals. You go to other circuits, it's horrible. Guys cooperate out of Indiana, Illinois, these states, they're still getting smoked with, with, with bodies and crimes. And New York's the only one that gives you those crazy deals. I don't understand that because I had Lara Mazo on, and they've done like 10, 15, 20 murders. Yeah, murders. Making deal they're serial killers. They're yeah. I like them, but I, lo because I love the I'll interaction tell you why. and because the stories. organized crime was so powerful that they had to work with the worst guys to get what they want. Think about that. Sammy Gavano killed 19 people. He got five years. 19 people was killed by this man. Five years, because why? They wanted John Gotti Sr., right? They, if you, they had to break down to the judges. You have to give these guys a fair sentence. They're giving us what we need and want. These are huge cases. This is the biggest cases in the five boroughs. So New York is known for the best deals with organized crime. You, I have friends of mine that killed six, seven, eight people, time served, when they go in front of them. Because they give the mob bosses these big cases, the union rackets, all this stuff, so they have to you know, take care of you to make it like, oh, why am I going to cooperate? These guys are getting fucking ton of time. They make it look juicy, look good. You know what I mean? So when you cooperate, what prison do you go to then? Do you have to go in protection? No. Yeah, I went under a fake name in New Jersey. I went to Somerset County for a year, and then they put me into Farrington. A fake name? But yeah. Been, that's not really... Yeah, well, no, just for a year. Yeah, I was there. Well, I was out in the middle of nowhere in Jersey. What was that like? Oh, man, a lot of mess. I made a mess in there. Oh. I made a mess. Oh. Knocked the guy's teeth out. I got into altercation with somebody. He dropped dead of a heart attack. It was bad. What happened with the guy who took a heart attack? Yeah, so uh, we had an altercation in the cell. He was on Suboxone. He dropped dead of a heart attack in the hospital. He ended up dying in the hospital. I tried to save him. I threw water on him, CPR. 
Fill your water on them. I try to do it. Fucking, you know, I fucking <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to do. I'm just saying. I did the bastard. right thing. I called the cop. You know, I told him what happened. You know, he, he died of a heart attack. Could you have? Did they investigate that? Yeah, it was proven. The doc. They came back. He died of suboxone. He had suboxone in his system. What's suboxone? Like heroin. Yeah. What's that like? You, you, your life seemed to be full of chaos. It was chaos. I knocked the guy. So I'm in there, right? And um. They were flipping out on me in this one too. I, I punched the guy's teeth in and then I beat him with a chair and they were trying to rearrest me. I'm not who I am. I'm under a fake name. They can't fingerprint me. So they had to work it out where the warden said he was defending himself, you know? Mm -hmm. And they didn't charge me. I caught staph infection in my hand because his tooth was in my hand. Who's in these sort of prisons? Oh, it's still gang. It's still people just from their area, you know? Is it people who switched? No, no, it's not. Thing? It's a regular county jail. I'm just under a different name. They are think you, I'm in there for like burglary or something. Are you worried that anybody found out who you were? Nah, I was just coming out of Rikers Island. I was really wild, man. You know what I mean? I was on jail time. You know what I mean? So I didn't give a shit. So what happens when you get moved there after a year? No, uh, they put me in Farrington. That's with all high profile cooperators. Then I'm with all like super high profile people. Who's cooperated? Yeah, huge. El Chapo's cooperators, guys ahead of cases, arms dealers, you know, biggest uh, top terrorists. You know, all kinds of shit. How the fuck do you trust anybody in that prison? You can't. <laughs> you can't. Everybody's you might, you, on you might be one, two good people, that's it. And other than that, yeah, the rest of them are just, you know, weird. What do people say in there? The, are they honest with cooperating? Because yeah. everybody knows who's well, who. Well, not always, but, you know, most of them are. You know, I met, I had some good friends in there, you know. I was with Anthony Arrelato in there from Mass. You might have interviewed him. He was a mob guy out of Massachusetts. They, his co-defendants killed Whitey Bulger. You might, yeah. Um, I was with uh, him. I got close with him in there. I was with uh, Teddy DiBatoro. Who's he, he? He was a Philadelphia hitman. He blew up um, Philly Testa with a nail bomb. Nail bomb. Yeah, that's him. He planted under the stoop and detonated it. <laughs> yeah, I was with him. He got life. He got screwed after cooperation. Uh, so a bunch of guys. The Flores twins for El Chapo. Margarito Flores. I was with him. I was with the head of the Tijuana cartel, Frankie. His bro, uh, him and his brother were like most violent. I think they killed a priest out in Mexico. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, with a lot of high profile guys. What are you thinking then at your life when you're in there, you've cooperated, you know the old life is done, you can never go back to it. Is that a relief as well? Or Yeah, it's both. I knew I was going to have a good life. My, my plan was once I knew I was doing this, I knew what I had. I knew I had gold, you know, all the crew I was with and the money and everything. I knew I was going to write a book mm -hmm. and I had that kind of planned. I didn't know I was going to get into the podcast world until Johnny reached out to me. And I and then we had this idea of a, we started the mafia podcast. We had no idea that it was gonna blow up like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it ended up blowing up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I like John, man. Yeah. So I do. I like him. You can just tell by his presence that he was not a man to be fucked with. I know there's a lot of shit online and everybody going back and forth. It all seems schoolboy stuff to me, especially when people were about that life back then. Obviously, people can. Fra fabricate things and whatever. Everybody tells a story. Yeah, puts his error was nuts, in. though. He was, yeah, but he that's was, the proper yeah, error, error I know was, of the mafia. Yeah, his error was really wild. Um, Johnny did a lot of work, so Johnny did a lot of shit in his life. So did you have plans? Because you know now, everybody talks, everybody writes books, everybody cooperates. It's not a big, it's not like a big thing in the eighties when people were cooperating. The Savary Bull cooperated in the early nineties. It was a, a massive shock. Yeah, it was. Yeah, with it's him. not a shock now. Yeah. No, it's not a shock no more. Yeah, I mean, and you, you gotta understand. You gotta see the gang members because they don't glorify them. See, we're putting newspapers. We got our own website, Gangland. They don't have that. So when these gangs, seventy of them get locked up, fifty of them are cooperating. You just don't know who they are because they don't talk about them. With us, when we do it, we're on the front page of the paper. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So do you think yours were the last of the sort of mafia? Back yeah, then? our crew was definitely the last real crew for organized crime. Right now, it's all washed up. We was no, you don't even hear about nothing no more. We were the last, like last hurrah, as we call it. Do you think it's totally closed down then? It's dead. Yeah, it's pretty much dead. So, see when you're coming out of prison, do you have to plan? Was that any hits? I I was nervous about what I was going to do, but I knew I had the book plans. Um, people told me books don't sell no more. I remember hearing that, and then I sold thousands of books so you know <laughs> but the johnny and gene show like i says that was um it was during COVID. i just came out december 2019 COVID hit three months later but jo johnny put me on vlad tv as soon as i walked out the door so i'm on vlad now everyone wants to know who, all about me because i'm modern day there's no modern day guys out there running around like i was maybe do a little loans and sports not run around like a fucking cowboy so i had all of that and then um we said let's do a podcast 
and it blew up. <laughs> I read the newspaper every week. We were putting all the cooperators on. The government was going crazy. <laughs> they put me back in jail over it, you know. Yeah. It was going crazy. Yeah, because you ended up back in prison. You oh, just multiple got out times. Last year, so what happened? You're not you thinking about screwing the head and going, okay. No, because I didn't like that they were like picking and choosing. So they were like, I wasn't even doing anything wrong. So they didn't want me talking about the stuff. They didn't want me doing this stuff. They didn't want me becoming famous off the podcast. They didn't like the attention that we were getting. Um, and I was still on probation, so they, they own you. But I was like this. I'm not listening to you. And that's what the problem was. So what did you get charged with? Oh, I mean, I did threaten someone. That was also part of the violation. I threatened to kill someone. Yeah, so that was bad. Then um, I ended up going in four months jail, six months house arrest. They restarted my probation. I came out. Three weeks later, they violated me again. And then again. I wouldn't listen, but I had a good judge. Do you never worry that they could have just fucked you off for life because you kept fucking up? I felt like I wasn't really doing bad, though. It was like we weren't. I wasn't committing crimes. The one mess up I did was to threaten the person, but other than that, I wasn't doing nothing wrong. I was just going on podcasts. They how, didn't like it. How long could that have got you in prison with? A Five fit? years, because I was a Category 6. I'm a, My points are 48, life sentence points. So I'm supposed to be, I'm a lifer. You know what I'm saying? That's what they t keep telling me. Like, you were fucking not a life for 40 years. You're, you're a guy that's supposed to be gone forever. You know what I mean? So they get mad about that. So what's it like going back to prison? Do you, do you need to change your name of that again? Or no, I went No, I went to the unit. I was, in, I was in the box a lot. I was in the hole a lot. So when I went back the last time, I did most of it in the hole. And then when I went back again, I did a lot of it in the hole. Then I went back again, I did a lot of it in the hole. So I ended up doing like 20-something months in violations. Did you ever get therapy? They always made me go to anger management. Every time I came <laughs> out of prison, my whole that life. That was the first thing I'd want to do. Yeah. I said, get him a fucking therapist. You know, my therapist got me violated one time. Why? She I was on phone monetization. I wasn't supposed to have two phones. I had two phones secretly. So I had one that they were they were looking at. Um, anything I text goes to their probation because I threatened somebody. So they couldn't do it to iPhones. You can't go into an iPhone. Uh, you have to have a warrant to go into an iPhone. So they didn't have the software program to go into an iPhone. They don't have it. But Android, they go right in. So, like, you have to have an Android. I just, they said, get rid of your iPhone. I said, okay. I didn't get rid of it. I had it secretly, and I had the Android. And my therapist seen me with two phones, and she told my probation. She's obligated to. She's still a law officer, you know what I mean? So that raised flags that he said he has a burner phone. So when they violate, the article's funny. Burner phones and steroids. That's what they talk, That's what they titled it, because I was taking steroids, and um, I had got, they took... They seized a phone. They thought I was committing crimes in Florida again. I wasn't. But I was doing steroids at the time. And um, it was on the text messages that I was purchasing steroids. So they made a big thing about it. They said I left the state. With, they had a reign of charges. My ex-girlfriend was getting me all kinds of trouble. Said I left the state without permission. She was getting me in shit. So I went in front of the judge with like a 17 count. 17 counts. They were asking for years. He gave me six months and terminated me. And I ended up doing... And then he had another violation. He gave me like another f additional 40 days, which they were furious about. I actually had a prosecutor, James. Listen to this. He hated me so much. He's assigned to Donald Trump right now. That's how big he is. He, Keith Edelman, he's a real fuck. And I, that's the only one I didn't get along with. I got along with N Nancy. I mean, Nancy, my lawyer, who was like family. And that's Lindsey Gertis, who's a huge prosecutor. And Nicole Jeteri, who's like, I think the attorney general right now. She's huge. I got along with them well. This Keith Edelman guy, he just, I don't know what his problem was, but he kept coming at me. He he hated me so much in my last violation. I'm going to get sentenced by Judge Block. We already had something worked out with them that's saying, listen, we're going to give him whatever he gives. We're going to say concurrent. Whatever the Judge Block, we're going to say recommend concurrent. So in other words, it gives me a year and a day. It's concurrent with my six months I just got because they could have screwed me and went consecutive and I have to do a lot more time. He flew down from D.C. He flew down to D.C. He's a D.C. prosecutor. He works in D.C. He flew down to my sentencing. And my lawyer goes, Keith Edelman's in the courtroom right now. I says, what the fuck he's doing here? She goes, he's coming. He's trying to screw you right now. So he made it like he randomly was in the courtroom on my sentencing day. He just so happened to be in the Eastern District. And he came there purposely to try to fuck me. And Judge Block wouldn't listen to him. And Judge Block still went against him and gave me nothing. Forty-something days. They said that I ran from the police. I had to admit to it. Uh, cops went to pull me over in Florida. And I took off on them. Mm -hmm. I said, I didn't know they were pulling me over. And they <laughs> and I, that was part of my, uh, I didn't want to admit to that. What was Florida like? I was doing fine. I was just getting caught up with my ex-girlfriend. You know, a lot of bullshit with that. It was like bullshit. They lied, said I pulled a gun on somebody in the bar, which was a total lie. 
the FBI was like lying on me a little bit. Like I was really in shock with that. This agent, Christine Myers, she had like a real hot on for me. Like she was like going to Florida, lying on me. I told the judge, I went into that bar. I got into an argument with somebody. If I pulled out a gun, that would be all of a camera and on the news. They'd have the video. There was no gun. They were trying to make it sound worse for me. Like they needed me to be sound like a gangster again. So this judge would give me five years or four years because I'm eligible for five, 60 months. I'm a, cat, I'm, I'm a hard category. And uh, he just wouldn't go for it. He goes, I don't know. He goes, I'm going to give him 40-something days concurrent. They were furious and terminated me. What happened with the old crew? My whole crew? They're all out again, except for Ronnie. Do you ever speak to them? No. No. Is that well, done? Most of them are punks, and I'm not trying to talk bad about them. There was like two. Mike Padavona was a tough guy. Ronnie G's legit tough guy. Vinny's dead. Sarah died. Jerry can't mess around no more. He's got like three Rico case convictions already. Jackie's out of the game. He was he's done. They asked him to be the consigliere. He told him he didn't want to do it. You know, these guys are all just like it's all washed up. You know, Mike Palmacio was a good guy. I got along with him good, but he wasn't a gangster. You know, he was supposed to die multiple times. He got shelved like four times. Um, so it's like real dismantled right now, you know. Everybody's just doing their own thing. What do you think of that life now? Um, right now the life is a yeah. complete joke. Because obviously you wanted to be in that life, but it causes a lot of pain. Obviously, you've got victims. Obviously, your own life is right. in and out of prison. You wanted that life, but what do you think of that sort of life? In right now, home? I yeah. would I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. I mean, because it's really nothing to recommend now. But I would tell them if they were coming up in my era, when it was still crazy at the end, um, I, I was promoting it. You know what I'm saying? I was always taught to recruit kids. You know, now I mean, you, there's nothing even to put them in. <laughs> there's no organized crime really. It's it's, it's like a fraternity it's nothing there's no more violence no one's getting killed no more no one's you know there's nothing if you get an indictment now you just get sports betting and loan shocking you know one's going to jail for a long time no more you know it's oh so you'll never know where someone stands at you know you know what i mean because they're not doing big boy crimes they're doing petty shit gene borello never sits here with you today if i'm facing 15 20 years do you understand that and i'm being honest with you you'll never meet me no one know me i'd be sitting in prison you know what i mean uh -huh. Guys now are never facing that kind of time. You'll never know what their heart's really at. Who's cooperating over five years? Nobody that I know. Six years, seven years. Guys that the time, the crimes we were doing were facing 100 years, decades. You, you don't know what someone's going to do. So you'll never know where someone, to recruit someone now, you don't even know what they're really about because they're not going to prove themselves to you. Oh, what, would you borrow them, lend money out? We had to prove ourselves. I'm running around with guns, shooting people, going doing crazy shit, tying people up. Kidnapping people, digging holes. We tried to kill a witness, put a guy in a hole. We were doing fucked up crazy shit. So nowadays you can never know what someone's really about because they're never going to be put to that test if you for get, organized crime. Do you have, what's your biggest regret in that life? My biggest regret? I should have listened to Chris Cagnata. He told me, come with me. Fuck these guys. We'll take over. That's what he told me. He goes, they, that's what he told me. I'll never forget it. It's not damn dead. He goes, fuck these guys, Gene. He goes, me and you, come on, we'll fucking sell drugs. We'll fucking do our thing. We'll never have these worries because if I was with him, I wouldn't have had a bullseye on my back. When you go with these mafia guys, you get a big bullseye on your back. I'm walking with Vinny Sarah every day. This guy committed the Latanza heist. He's one of the most wanted men. I'm walking next to this guy. What do they put on you? A big bullseye. That's it. That's how, all much, it is. how much did they get for the Latanza heist? $7 million. It was the biggest airport heist in American history. In the history of America. It's nice. That's a nice bit of bread. Though. He blew it. He, had eight, he got 800000 out of it. He blew it in a couple of months in the racetrack. He's the degenerate gambler. Yeah, that's what he told me. Yeah. Yeah. Were you gambling or anything? Yeah, of no course. We all did. I wasn't as bad as he was, but we were all bad gamblers. Everyone did the gambling, you know? How hard is it to keep a relationship and that lifestyle? Oh, when... Yeah, it's, it's not hard. I mean, but you have to have a girl that's willing to be okay with all this shit. You know what I mean? Most of the women I was with were, were okay with it. Yeah, their heads must be fucked as well. Though. Yeah, oh yeah. One was in the house with me when they tried to kill me, so the bullets almost hit her too. Yeah. Did she stay with you after yeah, that? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It was just part of that regular crazy life. Most women like that shit, you know? A lot of women like it. Yeah, why is that life? Why do you think, obviously for the younger audience, why do you think that's so appealing for people, that the gangster lifestyle? I don't style? know. I don't have no idea. I can't explain it. I don't know. If yeah, they, everybody like the... gravitates towards it, even on Netflix, all the best, all the biggest hitters are true crime. Yeah. There's a John Gotti documentary, Get Gotti Number One. Yeah, my cousin did that one. Anthony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like Anthony. Eddie's cool, yeah. Yeah, he's a good guy, man. Yeah. 
So you're related to all these mob guys as well? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. How was it when Anthony cooperated? What age were you? I was fucking in my heyday. I was in the middle of me. It, it hurt me in a way. Because everybody knew I was my cousin. You know what I mean? But, you know, it is what it is. Do you get teased for that? Nah, hell no. No, they just knew that I was my cousin, you know? Did you ever get nightmares? No. When I was in that life? No. No? No. no. Mm-mm. How was it writing your book? It was good. Yeah. How took, long did it take you? Oh, it took me a while. You know, it was a lot more in it, but like I said, the, the editor kind of mangled it, but, you know, they still like it. But um, it was good. We did good. Where I mean, can people get your book? Oh, all over. Amazon. Uh, you can DM me for personal autograph copies. Um, it's on every book website. It's a fucking crazy life, though, isn't it? Crazy. I, it was an adventure. My life is a movie, and that's just the God's own truth. And I was even bragging. It's, this is not a normal life, obviously, that I lived. You know, walking out with guns, doing all this crazy shit. You know, it's like, it's not normal. You know what I mean? But that's how I lived, you know? And I can't change that. How you know did you mean? dress? Obviously, back in the day, it was all different. Suits. Yeah, look at Louis Vuitton Sean John, hat. Sean John, Milano yeah, with hoodie on. Yeah, this is this is a modern day guy. That's what. That's why a lot of people love that I'm on the air because people that are from my era can relate to me. Mm-hmm. You know, we weren't wearing three piece suits, running around with suspenders and tap shoes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that just wasn't our era. Uh, I was on the Sammy Gavano show, and I said, "What was it like chasing somebody in tap shoes?" I said, "How'd you even chase them? How do you run?" <laughs> you know what I mean? So, whole different era. We wore sweatsuits. You know, Nietzsche, uh, Sean John in my era, um, Jordans. You know, all, all high end fashion. You know, that was just our thing. What did the old school say about that? Oh, they hated the Yankee hats cocked to the side. They hated that. When you put the hat and they shoot it, mm-hmm. oh, they fucking hate that shit. Yeah, they did not like it. Were you a rapper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is crazy to see, because everybody knows a gangster, especially in New York, as suited and booted. Not no smart. more, no. Yeah, it's changed. That's how it's different from... My era, at least. Yeah, I mean, your era's different. You still have guys that dress like that the old timers, but we only dress like that when we absolutely had to. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's not going on me. What's the best thing about being involved in the uh, mafia? You know, the money, power, respect. Is that it? Yeah, but it's short-lived. It's short-lived, you know? Think about it. It's short-lived, bro. I'm supposed to be serving the rest of my life in prison. See if you could do it again without getting caught, would you? No, I, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to answer. You fucking would, man. Yeah, it's you hard to answer. I'm not going to lie. I don't know. <laughs> That's you hard. Seem, like I say, your life seemed full of fucking chaos, man. It was you real seemed, chaos. Like, you seem to enjoy it, though. I like drama. Wanna... I like beef, too. So I used to fight with everybody. That was my thing. I beefed with everybody. If you were the toughest guy, I want the beef with you. You know what I mean? What is that, then? I don't know. I just like to... I didn't like bullies, either. Like, if I thought you were, like, bullying people, I would make my way to you. Was there many bullies in that life? Absolutely. Yeah. Was there? Absolutely. Yeah, guys that use their name, take advantage of people, you know, do things. Who did you fear the most? Who I feared? Growing up, Ronnie one on was a really dangerous guy. Everybody was scared of him. Charles Caniglia, Vinny Asaro was really feared. Um, Who are these guys? Who's the first two? Gambino guys. Was it Gambino the, the strongest family, do you think? Uh, yeah, for a little while. But, you know, there was particularly guys that were scary looking, should I say. They were just scary looking dudes. When we were kids, Ronnie one on was a really scary looking guy. Mm-hmm. Very intimidating, you know? How's the got in him now? He's a double lifer. Ronnie Wanham? Yeah. He's gone for life, yeah. Most of them are dead. Most of everyone that I came up with or like, they're all dead, jail, you know, co-op. That's, that's our outcome for the guys that were really, mm-hmm. that's what I was trying to explain to you. The guys that were really doing shit, that's the outcome. Nowadays, they're not going to have that outcome. No one's cooperating over five years. No one. You're not, this does not happen. Mm. Our era was still crazy, so we're facing a shitload of time. All those guys that were, where we're from is dead, ratted. Life in prison. That's it. What do you do with your life now? Oh, I do a lot. Yeah, I have a lot going on. I'm constantly in the mix. I'm, I'm really trying to... Uh, my book is about to be coming to a TV show. Um, I'm going to a, a film, Pony. It's a real Hollywood film. Um, I got all kinds of shit going on, man. Honestly, I'm, I, I took off. Once I got off probation, I took off like a rocket ship, man. How was it to try and change it and try and stay on the right path and do the right thing in life? Was it difficult for yeah, you? Yeah, so I don't commit crimes no more. I get to add in my life, but the only problem I have is I don't take shit from anybody. That's not a crime, but it could be if you punch them in the face. You know what I'm saying? But that's the only thing you might get out of me is that I don't know how to walk away from situations, but I'll never like go out and commit an armed robbery. I'll never do a, something like that again, but I'll punch you in your face. You know, don't think you're going to come up to me and say what you want, do what you want. It's not going to happen. That's never going to change. That's just the truth. I don't look for trouble, but I don't run from it. 
Do you think you'll ever be back in prison? No, not no more. No. The only way I could end up back in prison is if I, I fuck up and hit someone or something like that. Other than I'll never, like, purposely go out and commit a crime. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How is it walking about New York and stuff now? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Does people know you? Of course. I mean, I'm sure. You know, everyone knows me over here. How did you and John come about? John Elite? How's that? How's well, that he's a family friend. That? Yeah, he's been, he grew up with my Aunt Connie. He was best friends with my uh, cousin Albert. My you know, my whole family know him, you know what I mean? So he had reached out before I got home in 2019 and said, tell your nephew to call me when he gets out. And that's how. What do you think? All this kind of camera. Well, his is... sons, I know from the neighborhood. His sons used to be on my football team, you know? How do you think now of all these so called gangsters and mafia boys, proper hitmen? Up and coming young school on cameras and talking. It's fucking it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, listen, it's my, this it's is my, where the money's it pays at. my bills. Yeah, man, this man, is man. where the I'm not complaining, you but have, it is weird. You have guys on YouTube making twenty thousand a month, thirty thousand a month. It's more. You know what I mean? So you, you guys will say, Oh, you're on YouTube. You got guys making a fortune on here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, we have the Johnny Jean show rebooted and that's doing great right now. Mm -hmm. You know? Have you had any backlash? No. No backlash. No, not at all. I'm not on probation. Nobody can say nothing to me. Nobody owns me no more. I can do whatever I want. You seem to own your story. That's what I love about you. Every, you seem to fucking... Yeah. You seem to embrace it. You don't really give a fuck what you've done, what you've said. I don't. Because I know... Like, I can sit here and give more details, but I know what I was doing. I know what I was about. And everyone knows what I was doing in prison. Of course, people are going to talk shit, but I know who I really was and what I was doing. I know the kind of guy I was. So it is what it is. I cooperated. I did what I did. But let me explain something to you. 90% of the people in my generation, if they were in my shoes, they would have done the same thing. 100%. And if we're, I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm not making an excuse, if my little brother wasn't on that gun charge, I probably wouldn't have cooperated. I couldn't let him get seven years. It was hard for me. Because I sent them. He didn't even want nothing to do with it. I made him go. He got caught with a gun. He was fucked. And they were basically using him against me. You know what I'm saying? Like, your brother's going to get seven years. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't deal with that. You know? They were messing with my ex-girlfriend too. You know? She was caught up a little bit. I was in a bad spot. So, but like I said, other than that, I was legit, bro. I was a bad guy before I had the mafia. You know, I didn't need them to be a bad guy or a tough guy. You know what I'm saying? I didn't need them to do that. I just got caught up with that life and it let me act out my fantasy, should I say. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> because I was always going to do violence and bad things with them, you know? That's what it seems like. It seems like a movie. It was. The people in that lifestyle, they feel as if it's a, a game, like a fucking movie. But when does it come? When does reality happen? I was looking to kill someone every day. I'm going to be honest with you. When does reality hit home that it's not a, a game, that it's not a movie? When you're getting 40, 50 years rammed up Yeah, that's hard. You no, know, no, it's more hard when you have people that care, that you love, that are on the outside and you're on the inside. And that you took care of people, you did this, you did that, you know, that that's what kills you too. See, when you're in prison, how many friends have you actually got outside that come and visit, send money in? No, I had a lot of people. Did you? I did. I had support always. That I did. I did a lot of, see, all the bad I did, but I did a lot of good, I had a good heart. I fought a lot of people's beefs. I took a lot of people's backs. I always helped people. That was my thing. I had, I was like, it was so weird. Like you, I had like this great heart. And then the next moment I would like, you know, do something heinous. Bipolar? Yeah, I guess so you could say that. I was like so weird the way I was. How was it? How was things once your dad died? How was the relationship? Oh well, yeah, it's sad, you know, but um, we were cool. But you know, diabetes got him. Did you have any regrets with that relationship? No. Nah. No, no, no. He was hysterical. My father should have been a stand-up comedian. He was just nuts, you know what I'm saying? But he was funny as hell. <laughs> but, but did he ever do a podcast? No. He, I, if, he was, if he would have, he'd be a character. He was so funny, my father. He was hysterical, man. Yeah. How's love life and stuff now? Do you have any children or anything? No, I don't. No. I'm single right now. Um, yeah. You know, I get a lot of attention, but I'm very picky. <laughs> how, is that? how old are you? I'm 39. So start when are you 40? Or well, June. I'll be 40 in June. Just done 40 in February, bro. Yeah. It's fucking horrible. I know, man. It's and fucking there, right? horrible. I take care of myself. I work out. You know, I'm very big into the gym, you know, that stuff. So I just uh, I just take care of myself, you know? Yeah, because even though the old gangsters back in the day, they're all fucking fat and unhealthy. Like, how could they have ever Well, a lot of these it? kids look horrible. You got kids 25 years old, like they're 60. These kids are all fucking out of shape this era, too. They don't do shit. Mm -hmm. A lot of these kids just play video games, sit around and eat. Have you, did anybody ever try to get you back into that life? No, when you came out? no, that's not even allowed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do then for the future? What's the big plans? The big plans: my book become a TV show, and I'm going to retire off that. I mean, you know, it's going to be a big TV show. That's what they're trying to make it. Where would you like to be in the world? Oh, I, where would I like to be in the world? I mean, I'd like to be sitting in a nice big house. Yeah, you know, on the water, hanging out. That's it. Do you think you would have ever been sitting in front of a camera? Kind of? No, 
I told somebody the other day, I never thought I'd be doing this. Never. Mr. Gene, the bad guy? Never. <sighs> How is that possible, though? Even I when you get Sam and Bill in that doing podcast, it is fucking strange to see. It's I the know. world we live in, but this guy was, he was proper old school, man. He fucking lived it. He's, for me, if you're going to do a true crime, he is the number one out there to get. There's nobody. He killed Paul Castellano. Yeah, at that life. <laughs> do you know what I mean? They, he changed mafia history you know what I mean so it's like you know it's crazy but that's why I, I and I was saying this the other day we get more attention than than real celebrities you know what I mean because we're so out there think about it you think about the views that we get we get seen more than actors and shit like that they were just saying on the YouTube that YouTube uh, people are more known than actual actors <laughs> and celebrities it's all changed it's, it's crazy I, my DMs is, I get thousands of DMs thousands people all over the world you know how does people react to your stories? No, they're cool. They like me. I get along with everybody. I answer everybody. I'm not a dick. You know what I'm saying? I talk to everyone. It's a crazy lifestyle, though. It very is. crazy. It's very t toxic m madness. Everybody's full of rage and hate. Yeah. But you seem quite. You seem in a good place now. Yeah, I am. Because that took a long time to get there. Well, the probation was messing me up. I'm off. I travel a lot now. I go all over the country. You know what I'm saying? Um, sorry, not the country. Yeah, the states. I can't. Mm -hmm. leave, I haven't left the country yet, but I will be. And I'm all over the place now. You know, California, Arizona. I'm going all over Vegas. Could so. could they still be watching? Nah, I don't do nothing wrong. Yeah, you know, watch me get. Have fun watching me. Just gonna see me hang out and party and stuff like that. You ain't gonna see nothing you want to see. Are you still partying? <laughs> yeah, I go out and hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a fucking crazy lifestyle. Where yeah. can people watch all your stuff? Uh, Johnny and Gene show. Everyone knows that YouTube channel. Um, it's back up and running. What about your social medias? Uh, Gene Barello. It's my name. Instagram. So you only got out of prison a few months ago. Yeah, on that violation, I did eight months. I came out September. Yeah, you're a fucking liability if I'm honest bro, yeah. as well, man. MDC Brooklyn. Ho hopefully you do fucking stay out, though. Yeah. Um, and they turn it into a movie like I say. It's the kind of younger school of the way it used to be. Obviously, right. things changed. The dress sense, everything changed. Mm -hmm. People's got the track shirts and the big gold chains. And what's the what was the best thing about being involved in a life of crime? I mean, there was so many. Uh, the adrenaline too. I was adrenaline junkie. I remember I had beef with somebody and. I was carrying guns. I was on probation. I just came home, parole. I almost walked into probation with a gun on me. Not knowing I'm going to probation. I fucking thank God just realized that right before I went in, it went right back out. I was like, rush, I was playing Russian roulette every day. You know, getting pulled over with guns in the car, still on parole. You know, it was the adrenaline, I guess, the excitement, you know? What do you think looking back in your life so far? Looking back? Yeah. No, I mean, I did a lot of fucked up shit, you know, so people glorify it, but, you know. That's I, what it is. It's your story. Yeah, it's a true story. It's just, you know, a lot. We did a lot of shit, you know. Mm -hmm. I was part of a lot of things, and um, people glorify it, but, uh, you know, I hurt a lot of people too, you know. I have a lot of bad things I did to people, so, you know, I feel bad. You know, I do I do feel bad. You know, I have a little bit of a, I have a heart. You fucking like bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad a little bit. I mean, I was robbing drug deals. I mean, I went on a show, and the guy goes, oh, he's wearing my watch. It was a lie. They tried to get me violated. He's a criminal's calling up on me, you know. So it's like it's a do doggy dog world, you know. For anybody watching those, maybe want to get involved in a life of crime because it is sexy. There's something that men it's gravitate short towards. Lived. That. What advice would you say for them? It's short lived. Listen, you understand. You'll be the guy for a little while. You have the money, the cars, the women, the jewelry, and then they'll take it all from you. That's it. You're gonna lose it. You know, there's never gonna be a time if you're doing big boy crimes. You're out there. The FBI, the cops. You're gonna go to jail. They have to. So they get paid for. You know what I mean? You're gonna go. You're going to lose everything. You go to prison, you lose your girl, you lose this, you lose your house, everything you got, your jewelry, your cars, it's all gone. Start over again when you get out if you want to. If you could change anything, what would you change? If I could change anything? Mm -hmm. Maybe you would have went to school and got an education, you know what I mean? Maybe. You know? See, a lot of the guys you were involved with, what was, the, was their upbringing sort of the same? It's worse, yeah. They're old. Everyone I work for is older than me, mostly. So that era was even wilder. Born in like 65, 70. Remember, in the mob, you always work for older people. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So you're never going to, you know, I, I had guys my peers, but for the most guys I answered to were older. So they grew up the same way, no school education, but made a lot of money. Think about it. My boss had a seventh grade education, but he's making 300000 a month in cash. Do you think he's a fuck about school? <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Do you care about school? He's making a fucking dream salary in one month. You know? Yeah. So it's the money that could also attract you too a lot, you know. 
That's the main attraction, I think. And Mine was. was. It was money, yeah. And money, then you get the power, the respect, and you know. Were you money driven? Yeah, very money driven. Right. Yeah. Can that be a bad thing as well, though? Yeah, of course. Fast money, fast time. Because it's not as if people think you're in the mafia, these sort of things. Well, not you're always not you make money not, with mafia. Yeah, you're not getting paid to do jobs. You're just no, getting you don't. to do a job. I explain that because the movies might show you, go, oh, yeah, go do this, you get paid. You don't get paid. You just work your way in, you know, and that's how you get noticed and work in and then you make money with them. That's it. Do you ever feel used? No, I didn't. No. Never? Nope. I nope. think you're the only person to ever say that. I didn't feel used. No. Because I you liked what I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. I liked what I did. I liked hunting people. I liked going after people. I didn't mind it. You know what I mean? Mm hmm This is something we like to do. Were you getting a throw from it? No, it's just like, you know, I like to get the job done. You know, I like to be, I, I wanted to prove to them that I was the best. You know, get things done in 24 hours. Faster sometimes. I sit on you in my car. I'll sleep in the car. I'll get you. Are you going to write another book? Nah. Done with the books. I'm just going to get into the Hollywood scene now. That's what I'm trying to do. You go do acting? Yeah, I'm going to try. All the plans for the future then? You're going to do movies? Trying. You're going to do the podcast? Yeah, podcast is good to stay with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We get a lot. We do good with the podcast. People love us together. What's yeah. your biggest life lesson that you've learned so far? Biggest life lesson? Um, never underestimate anybody. That was my biggest life lesson. Cause I, and stop trusting everybody because that was my downfall. I trusted people so easily. Why though? I don't know. I just didn't believe that people would, you know, do the things they did. So I trust very easy. You know what I mean? What was the biggest thing that you thought you was, was unexpected in that lifestyle? Yeah, like... Guys wearing wires on me, you know, I was I, I was very in shock that guys, you know, weren't even facing a lot of time putting wires on, you know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. like, I figured, like, why would you cooperate over five years, ten years? Like, that's not time to, to, to wear a wire. Yeah, it's, it's not like you got caught for, with a body in your trunk and you're trying to get out of a murder. You're trying to get out of ten years, eight years? What the fuck? I could throw my head in the closet. What are you worried about that for? Fifty years, forty years, I understand you don't know where someone's at. You a little petty bullshit time, five, you can't do five years? What do you think looking back in all your life? What do I think now? Yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of stupid shit. I, did a lot, I, made, I made a lot of dumb mistakes. If I would have, I, and I don't want to promote this, but I could have now known the knowledge that I know now, I would be the perfect gangster. <laughs> but I don't want to be like that no more. But I'm saying like what I know now, forget it. And if I was still out there today, oh my God. Did you ever struggle with mental health? Yeah. Um, ADD, ADHD. No, not really. I have a lot of disorders. You know what I mean? Like what? ADD, ADHD, all that shit, you know? I mm -hmm. can't sit still. Very hyper. Not supposed to have caffeine in my body, but that's all I drink. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, that, you know, that played a big part, you know? For anybody that's watching this, maybe an illegal struggle right now, what advice would you have for them? My my thing was this. I, I have no um no thought. I just do it. You know what I mean? That's really was my downfall as well. Like, I would just do it. I wouldn't even think of the consequence. i do it and then realize afterwards I fucked up. You know, I react off impulse. So that was very dangerous. You know, that could really ruin someone's life. So if anyone that really knows the situation, you know, you really got to think about what you're doing before you do it. Gene, listen, mate, for giving me the time and coming on there, I thoroughly yes. enjoyed that. You are a mad bastard. I can see you've got labels everywhere, whatever you ADHD, bipolar, yes. fucking. <laughs> but again, listen, it takes a lot of balls to come on and be honest with your story and, yeah. and own it. Yes. No bullshit. And that's, yeah, that, that's keep the it, thing. it is, yeah. Would you like to finish up on anything else? Um, no, that's it, man. I really enjoyed uh, coming on with you. Yeah, Good listen, time. thanks again. I wish you nothing but the best for the future, bro. Yes. Stay blessed. Bro. All right. Thank you. Bless.